Hey everybody, Coach here. Hey, thanks for taking a couple minutes joining me and watching and listening to what I have to tell you about today. This week we are talking about the troublesome landscaping of those side yards. The side yards where you just kind of scratch your head and you kind of go, what the hell should we do with this? You know, so most of the time people just cement them in or throw gravel down and call it good. We're going to come up with some ideas and some solutions for your side yard landscape today. I am glad you're here. Let's get going. You know, when I'm talking about the side yard, let's just clarify a couple things. I'm not speaking to you guys that have two, five, 10, 20 acre properties that you plunked a house down in the middle of. I'm not talking about that side yard. I'm talking to you guys that have residential burbs. You know, the ones with a 60 by 100 or 75 by 125 lot with your house on the middle. And you got those side yards. Now where I came from most of the time, it was completely fenced. If you were looking at the house from the street, on one side or the other, there would be a gate with that fence. On the other side, not so much, probably just fenced across. This is who I am speaking to today, so listen up. Now many times with these type of side yards, the gated side, if there was gonna be a wider side, the gated side will usually be the wider side. The dead zone on the other side of the property is usually narrower, usually a little uh, less useful, shall we say, and you have no access to it except from the back, coming out your back slider or your back French door, or however it was designed, and then coming down there. And you look down there and you go, Coach, I got nothing but a bowling alley lane, and that's about all it is. And that's sometimes all you can really do with it, but we're gonna get creative with it. This happens to be, um, kind of what my niche market was when I was landscaping, when I was contracting with folks and designing. And basically everyone sitting down at the kitchen table and I'd say, what's your big concerns about the landscape? What's going to be your uses? What's your purpose for the landscape? And they'd say, well, we want to do this out back and this out back and this out back, but we don't know what to do with that, that side yard over there. We, what do you do with those things? I heard that so many times. If only I had a hundred dollar bill, right? Okay, one of the approaches that I used to always do as a designer, and it's, uh, it was something that was taught to me decades ago in school, and that is walkability. Remember that term, walkability or navigation. The ability to go out into your backyard area or out the front door and be able to circumnavigate or walk around the outside of your landscape without getting your feet wet if it's not raining and not to be able to have to step in dirt or bark or grass or stone or whatever. So walkability is the circumnavigation of your property. And you're gonna find out why it is very, very important in the long term. So one of the things about these properties is uh, the gated side. Now, in some cases, a builder might do a front yard landscape and put it in for you. You know, the proverbial six, eight shrubs, grass, a tree, call it good. On the other side, you generally didn't get much of anything. You might got a little strip lawn or strip, uh, depending on where you live, strip landscaping over there on the other side of the driveway, but then it went nowhere. So in this particular case, we're going to talk about creating access, starting from the front yard and finishing in the back. The very first one I'd like you to consider is a pathway, walkway of some sort, some durable surface that goes from the front door area around to either the gated side or the ungated side. And the same thing goes for the other way. Sometimes that gated side will have a little elbow cement piece there. Sometimes it will not. It all depends what the builder gives you. In any case, we are going to start creating that walkability all the way from the front yard. And if you do not have a path to one side or the other, consider making one. And I suggest a minimum of three foot six inches wide. Better to have it four feet wide, that way two people can generally walk shoulder to shoulder and navigate their way through. So pathways from the front going to each side, each side area. And where there is not a gate, consider putting one. And you can do it in a simple fashion or you can do it in a very fancy fashion. Depends on number one, your skill level, 
Number two, your resources. And number three, do you want to do it yourself? Or are you going to farm this one out? I used to like gooching up the gates, um, kind of making a statement, depending on what the fencing was. Um, I, used to, I used to like doing a uh, kind of a, a vertical shiplap gate type of thing. And then I would take out the builder fence and I would put in some four by four or six by six posts and create an eight foot arbor that was about, mm, you know, five feet wide or so. And then the gate would go in the middle and then the fill boards. And you had something that was a lot more decorative, a lot more uh, statement making as far as boldness and structure rather than the typical, you know, builder fence. Having some side yard is better than not having any side yard at all. I think you'll agree with me there. It's better than the, the old glorified condominium townhomes that had zero lot lines, you know, where it had literally you had a shared wall with your neighbor. Yeah, it's a lot better than that. But in any case, generally where they've put the gate, the wider side of the yard, you'll have the, a couple options. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, that's going to be at least an eight foot side yard. The other side's probably going to be around four ish, maybe five ish. But on the wider side, you're going to do a durable surface all the way down the side yard. And it's probably going to be on the gated side where your side garage door is. And that is always helpful. So as we go through our gate of whatever kind, whatever you decide to put in there, Consider putting in a deliberate bump out of your hardscape, your flat surface there, for deliberate garbage can placement. Something that really works out well, and I did it dozens of times. You can enclose it if you'd like, so it's not visible, but it's accessible. You can pull out the cans on garbage night. And then you have a nice, clean, elevated, easy to roll garbage can area out the gate, down the driveway, into the street. Continuing on further down, we're gonna have a little bit of a wider type of walkway and you're gonna have some kind of a dirt area. Now, depending on the, the exposure of this side yard, if it's uh, east or north side, probably a shady options as far as any greenscape that you might wanna put in. Something I'll caution you on, and that is screen material. Uh, evergreen screen material in these areas. Be very selective on what you're gonna do. How much sun do you get? And what is the mature size of these screen materials? If you're on the south or west side, where maybe you have a very warm, hot exposure during the, the growing season, where it's just a blister on that side, consider something that I did many, many years ago. And a little bit of, I helped out an attorney in the San Francisco Bay Area. And a friend of mine and I designed and installed a side yard landscape. And it comes back to mind. I so much wish, that was 40 some odd years ago, and I so much wish I still had the article that was featured about that project in Sunset Magazine. And it turned out to be that my friend, who was an ex expert carpenter, he ended up designing a cantilevered uh, shade arbor up and over it. And the lattice were uh, two by twos spaced fairly close together. And so we had, we went from a hot, blistering, sunny area to literally almost a shade garden, a very dappled sunlight shade garden. And then where I came in is we did very large flagstone pathway that went all the way through with little gaps in between and then boulders and lighting and other stuff. And it came out really slick. It took a very hot exposed area and turned it into kind of a beautiful lush shade garden. And I had ground covers like the Blue Star Creeper and Azaleas. And I remember I had a couple dwarf rhododendrons and uh, dissectum Japanese maples and all kinds of things that worked out really good. I really enjoyed that project. And it was nice that the customer actually turned it into sunset for a little bit of, hey, look what these guys did. It was kind of cute. But something to consider, a self-standing, unless you want to have to pull a permit and pull it off the dwelling, you can put... Uh, a self-standing elbow, cantilevered, braced, shade arbor type of thing. It'll also help with screening, and then it'll give you other options. You can do vines up over the arbor, you can do all kinds of things. So something to consider on the wider side. Now, if you're under a, a time constraint and a budget, you can always go super simple. Do some kind of flat work, some durable surface, and then if you want, you can put uh, 
commercialized landscape fabric down and put some nice decorative stone, maybe a couple of boulders and some container type of stuff. Maybe drip irrigate that side a little bit and you can make it really tastefully, simply done and still be very, very functional. Remember those durable surfaces have to be enough that in case you're moving something, and when I say that, I'm talking about something heavy. So don't go getting the cheap crap flagstone. Get something that's the select, that's two and a half, two and a half inches thick. So say for instance, the only way you can put in a new fridge in the kitchen is to bring it up the driveway and all the way around to the backyard and into the slider. You can't get it through the front door for some reason, or you can't get it through the garage door for some reason. And you need that extra wide, extra wide four foot walkway. Or even better yet, what about if you put a hot tub in there? Rather than having the company have to go get a crane and lift it up over your house to a tune of about $1,500, you know, or maybe $800 for four hours of work, this way it can be stood on end and with two guys you can hand truck it in. If you have a nice four foot walkway, it's not a problem. It's gonna work out pretty easy. So something to consider. So as we traverse back on the other side of the house, the narrow side, what are some of the options that we have there? Well, number one, again, what's your exposure? And number two, what's the purpose of the landscape? Remember that as you start to think out these projects. So over there, this is where you could probably have a durable surface. Durable surface, you've put in a new gate down there. You've got something that comes around to the front walkway. So now you've got that circumnavigation, that walkability, and now you have very little room left between your dwelling, the walkway, and now the fence. So you may only have about a foot or so left between your walkway and your fence line. And down underneath there, you're gonna have cement posts and other stuff to have to contend with. You're also gonna have to deal with a little bit of drainage because most of the time downspouts generally will shoot water out to the side yards and not back into the backyard all the time where the living areas and stuff are gonna have to be contended with. Maybe the builder gave you some drainage as part of code. Maybe they gave you a little bit of drainage in the backyard and they graded the, the lot so any water before someone built would go to those drains and then they ran drainage. If you can still access that, then continue those drain lines all the way out to the front yard and beyond maybe in that little 12 inch spot. Maybe just gravel over that end of it and call it good, depending on how much space you have. I really like drip irrigating that and always doing containers. I'd like containers up against the, the posts and you can put shady, it's a sand quick camellias, you can do uh, hydrangeas, depending on what you have as far as exposure. So think creatively, think how you could gooch it up just a little bit. You can go all out or you can just do functional. Another suggestion is the narrow side is a great side, especially if it's east or north. For doggo, a dog run out there, if you have to go off to work, instead of leaving the dog in a kennel on the back patio, you can give them the whole side yard down there. Bring some water over there with an automated waterer. Maybe have a couple of pit drains underneath the, the sidewalk area so you can wash down waste and whatnot. And you can keep a nice doggo house down in the corner and it's easily clean and you've done a very good job at keeping everything tidy. Okay, so now we've talked about the side yards and some of the creative ideas and the functional ideas for that. Let's also talk about coming into the backyard now. We've gone through the gates, we've talked about durable surfaces coming down the side yard and now we're coming into the backyard. When you design this out, make sure that everything flows. You know, don't have a walkway directly behind a hot tub. Okay, so you're having to go around or don't make your outdoor kitchen here, you know, right in front of the walkway where you're having to walk around stuff. Things flow so that things can go. Your wheelbarrows can go, your walking can go very easily, your electrical, your irrigation valves, everything has to be placed correctly so that it doesn't impede where this walkability is taking place. Then go ahead and design your backyard. So two more things that you have to pay attention to. Number one is most builders, not all, but most builders on the corners of the backyard or the corners of a side yard is where your AC unit's gonna go. And you have to consider that as far. Now I have had many an AC technician, an HVAC come out and move the AC unit 
to a place that makes more sense and not block off the whole side yard. They would come out and rebraze the copper and do all that and move it over there and it worked out really well. The other thing is, is in some homes, either older or current, depending on what state or country you live in, you might have that fireplace bump out that's on the side yard. It could be on the narrow side, it could be on the wide side, depending on the design of your home. So you have a narrowing there that you have to consider. And lastly for this part, and that is where do your utilities come into your property? For newer homes, usually everything is underground and it'll generally come up the side yard between you and your neighbor and then branch off to your neighbor and to your, your property. And it's gonna be right there around the front of the fence area or at the fence area or behind the fence area. You have to find out. So, you know, 811. Find it, find out where it's gonna be. They'll flag it out for you and you'll know where you can do what without trying to sink post holes, boom, right down through your cable line or through your gas line or through your water lines, for gosh sakes. So be careful on those side yard utilities. For many folk, the side yards of their landscape tend to be the, the dark, creepy, boogeyman side of the, the landscape, especially obviously at dark. If there's ever a place to do a tasteful job of lighting, the side yards would be it, in addition to front and back. But we're doing it specifically for navigation, the walkability angle, and also for security itself. And you can make this, again, as simple or as fancy as you want. I used to always use 12 volt stuff with medium priced fixtures that I know would last five to 10 years. I used LED bulbs and did what I thought to be a pretty good job. But you can go on a budget if you want. You can put up solar lights on the fence post and then they can come on at dusk and go off two or three hours later. Or you can have them go dawn to dusk depending on the size. But it allows you to, well, for instance, you tell your eight year old to take the garbage out and he or she has to go out into the garage and out the side garage door and it's pitch dark, pitch, pitch dark. You know, it's kind of creepy. Being a good parent and a good homeowner, it'd be nice to have a little bit of light out there. Now, sometimes a builder will put a, an inside switch. Okay, all right, but sometimes it's not there. And it's nice to have a little bit of illumination out there where eight-year-old can feel safe, you can feel safe, you can walk around if you had to, and it makes it uh, presentable. And I'm not talking about making the side yard look like the Vegas Strip. I'm talking about just ambient light that works and takes away the darkness. It also keeps creepers and peepers out of there because if it's lit up, they're not going to want to hang out. So a little security issue there as well. Okay, for those of you who have a very narrow side yard on both sides, and there's not a lot of space, but you want to have something more than just cement over there. If you do not have an area that can opt for a greenscape, you might want to consider if your horizontal plane, your plantability on the horizontal plane is really limited, consider going vertical. And you can do vertical hanging gardens like this one here. You can do uh, hanging pots. You can do hanging water features. You can do all kinds of things using the support of your fence. Now, if you start hanging water features that are super heavy, you might have to brace the fence a little bit, but do it, do it tastefully. But consider vertical gardening. Consider stuff, I would not consider anything on the, the stucco or wood or anything on your house itself. But say you have only two feet on, of gardening space over there. You can do a tiered system. You can do a, a 12 inches up and 12 inches over and have a two-tiered raised bed that you can put in there and then plant whatever you want. You can have, you know, spillers and fillers coming over the fronts of each one. You can do, if you have enough sun back there, you can do small leafy veggies and that kind of stuff. And if you do vertical gardening, make sure that you waterproof the backside so that it does not, you know, rot out or destroy the fence between you and your neighbor. You might want to even make it separate so that it stands alone. You might have to sacrifice just a couple of inches. I think for homeowners just ignoring the side yards after you've paid so much money for the property and the home itself is really a waste. They can serve and do serve great functionality for transitional spaces from front yard to backyard. So don't overlook them. Consider the creative way that you can make yours functional for whatever your landscape use is. 
I hope you got a little something out of this. I really do. If you stuck around this long, I'd really appreciate a like. And if you are really interested in learning a little bit more, check out the website, youryardcoach.com. Hey, I got plan of the week out here. And if you guys are out uh, running and gunning and doing all kinds of stuff this weekend, consider taking me with the podcast. It's on all the carriers. Hey, and for this week's Q&A, I am answering a question sent in by Tracy of obviously the Fair Oaks, California area, zone 9B. And Tracy basically asks, hey, I've got an area that I wanna put in a permanent green screen, but instead of green, I'd like something that's kind of blue and maybe a little weepy. So what would you suggest? She could allow for 15 to 25 feet base width. That's gonna be a big screen. But I answered her by telling her this, that most of the larger green screens, like the green giant arborvitae and that kind of thing, is probably gonna be, number one, it's not gonna be blue, and it's really not gonna be that weepy. I sent her to the Wichita blue, skyrocket, moonbeam type of juniper. Still gonna go fast, still gonna go up. It won't have a lot of weepiness, but it's certainly gonna satisfy her blue-gray color scheme that she's looking for and it'll leave her a lot more room at the base. She's not gonna have to use up 15 to 25 feet there. She can do all other kinds of landscaping. So Tracy, out in Fair Oaks, California, thanks for your question. I very much appreciate it. And if you guys have a landscape question you wanna send in and have it answered on the channel, by all means, youryardcoach at gmail.com. Hey, I'll see you guys next Friday. Thanks again, I appreciate it. As always, to your guys' landscape success, Bye for now, see you next week.